Hello, my name is Pablo Stanley, and this is part of a crash course on Figma's Auto Layout. In this lesson, we're going to design a nav bar. First, we gotta do the left side with the branding and actions. Then we'll create the search text input that expands, and finally, the right side actions. Oh, but the right side has an avatar, a button, and a link. So more Auto Layout to add. Then we'll put it all together in a way that can adapt to any desktop screen size. And that's it. Let's do it. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to build. So I have this navigation in one single auto layout that goes horizontally, and it's divided in three parts. We have our left side actions. Then we have this input field, like a search box. And then we have our right side actions. So it's three parts, and these three parts are put together in this top nav that it has its own auto layout. And as you can see, it has its own spacing. So you see how the spacing here in between these three parts, it's making the input a little bit smaller because it's adding padding in between them. Let's bring it back to 16 pixels. Also, it has the padding around it. And the padding around it, uh, you can see that it's mixed. Uh, the padding on the left and on the right is different. And then on the top and the bottom, they are the same. And they're all aligned to the center. The center can be aligned to the center, center, center right, center left. It doesn't really make a difference. And we're going to learn why in a second. Also, here on the left, you're going to see that the brand it's its own auto layout. The text input is its own auto layout too. It has an icon in the text input. And also these buttons have their own auto layout too. They're made with auto layout. And that's pretty much it. Let's get to do this. So first I have the stuff that is going to be on the left. I have my branding and I have too many options that I want to add. So what I want to do is first of all, turn an auto layout for my branding, which is going to be the logo and the name of the app that is going to be called Buddy. So let's just press Shift A, and Shift A will turn this into an auto layout. Right here, I have it in a vertical way, so it detected it as a vertical and just put it that way. But I actually want it to be horizontal. I want it to be side by side. And right now, uh, this is going to be the logo, so don't worry, we're going to change that. But this is just uh, for simplicity's sake. Uh, but it's a line to the top, not exactly what I wanted. So don't worry, we can change this here on the alignment. I can say, you know what, I actually want it to be center like this. And it can be centered to the left and that's going to be fine. So all the elements are aligned to the left and also center vertically. So that's it. Also the spacing in between them, right now it's eight pixels. If I wanted to reduce that, I can go here, but actually I think eight pixels is good. Uh, now that I have my logo ready, I want to select that and then I'm going to select these two actions and I'm going to add another auto layout. So I'm going to press shift A and it did it vertically too. Again, let's change it to horizontal and let's change this to, I don't know, maybe 16 pixels in between them, uh, maybe 24, 24, just a little bit more. And also let's align them also to the center again. Now, what are you going to say? Why create two auto layouts? The thing is that I wanted to have a tighter spacing in between these two elements and more space in between them. So if I had not created this uh, auto layout, they would have made it something like this. And now my logo would have looked like the icon is over here and the name of my logo would have been too far away. And that's why we created two auto layouts, one for the branding and one to hold everything from the left together. So now uh, this gray rectangle doesn't look great. So I'm going to open the blush plugin and I'm going to turn this rectangle into something cool. So I'm going to use this one, Street Light by Young. I'm going to use the head character. It's actually pretty cool. So I just turned that rectangle into a random head character. I'm going to randomize. Let's see what our logo could look like. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> actually, no, let's, let's do it again. Yeah, I like that one with a little bird on the top. Now, the next step is going to be my input field in the middle. So I'm going to just drag these over here and I'm going to select this icon, just a magnifying glass and a search, uh, just a text that's going to say search. And I'm going to turn it into an auto layout too. So I'm going to press Shift A 
And now it's an auto layout. And now that it's an auto layout, I want to add a fill to it. So it's a fill like, so it looks like a, uh, like a text input. I'm going to add a little bit more padding around it, maybe eight pixels. Eight pixels looks pretty good. Maybe the space between the icon and that label should be less. Let's put it at eight pixels. And I'm going to add some corner radius around it. Uh, now, if I grow this, it's uh, it looks good. It's uh, it looks like uh, this things. It's aligned to the top left. Maybe, what if happens if I do this? Then it's not aligning elements to the center. So I actually want them to be aligned to the center, and I want this to be uh, hug contents and hug contents, and then I can stretch it like this. I feel like uh, this. Uh, icon is too close to the left. I want it to be a little bit more far apart from the left so I can change this here. Right now it's applying the same padding around every side, but I can actually say, hey, on the left, I want it to be a little bit more. 16 pixels, it just like gives it more room. Maybe it's too much. Maybe 12 pixels should be enough. 12 pixels, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to also make these gray. I don't like them black. Okay, cool. So we're almost there. Now we have our actions on the right. So our actions on the right, I'm going to go ahead and do the same as before. I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to align them horizontally. I'm going to put more space between them, maybe 16 pixels. That's good. But now I want these two get the app and sign up to be buttons. I don't want them to be just text actions, but I want them to be buttons. So I'm actually going to select this one that says get the app and I'm going to apply an auto layout to it. So I applied an auto layout and now we're seeing that uh, this one is center, but this ones are like aligned to the top. And that's because this auto layout as default is aligned to the top left. So I actually want it to be aligned to the right and center. And why to the right? Because this one is going to be, I want always to be the elements aligned to the right because it's on the right side of the nav bar. Okay, cool. So again, this is a button. So let's add a fill to it. Let's add a white fill and I'm going to add a stroke. I'm going to add this blue stroke. Let's add a lot of rounded corner. Actually, you know what? So it looks like this text input. I'm going to put uh, eight pixels on the route on the corner radius. Now this one is a little bit tight. So I'm going to add more spacing on the sides, maybe 12 pixels and 12 pixels. That looks pretty good. If I want it to be a little bit chunkier, I can go all the way to 16 pixels. And now I'm going to turn this into a component and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to reuse this one. I'm going to change it to sign up. By the way, this one is my original component. So maybe I'm going to duplicate it again. And this original component, I'm it, going to put it outside because this one is the original. I don't want to be using my original component here with the rest of them. Now this one, I actually want it to be, hey, I, the fill to be, uh, this uh, blue thingy and then the text inside to be white. So I'm going to turn this into white. There you go. That looks good. Now I also want to make these balls. I'm going to select my bold uh, text style. Okay. This is looking pretty good. I, I don't need this one anymore. And now we have uh, all of our actions on the right ready. I'm going to call them right actions. And then I'm going to call this uh, search fill and left actions. It's always important to just name your files correctly, or I don't know, in a way that it makes sense. Uh, because if not, you go crazy. I can tell you that I can assure you that you are going to thank yourself for naming your layers correctly. Okay. So I selected all of this. I selected the right, the search fill and the left actions. Now I'm going to press shift a to convert this into a frame and add an auto layout. So shift A, boom, and it's adding a 48 pixels of space in between them. That's because of the spacing that I had in between them, but I actually want it to be maybe 32, 32 pixels is enough. There's enough white space between them. Uh, and I also want it to be aligned to the center. Now, what happens if I grow this? Right now it's at this size, but what happens if I grow this? I actually want these elements to expand, you know, like, uh, if I grow this one to the left, it's okay. Why? Because it's aligned to the left. So that's good. But this one is not 
going all the way to the right. So how can I solve this? Well, what I can I can do is just make this one instead of uh, being a fixed width like the search uh, input, I can actually say, hey, you know what? I wanted to fill the container. I want to fill the container, and since it's, we're filling the container, this is pushing the contents on the right to the right. You know, so now if I want to uh, make it small or big, see how the search input, it's growing and expanding and it's keeping these actions pinned to the right. That's pretty good. So look at that. But also let's say, let's do it again. And let's say that you didn't have a search input and you still wanted to have that effect. You still wanted those actions to be over here, but I don't have a search input. Then what can I do, Pablo? Well, what you can do is change here. Here, instead of being packed, you want to say a space between, and the space between is just going to expand. And that's why it's not a fixed space, it's just that it's adapting to the size of the container. So now if I grow or expand this, the same is happening. How cool is that? So two ways of achieving that. One with a search input that is expanding, or another one where you say that the space in between is just uh, automatic. You can also do it here manually, just say auto. Now, one final thing. We want to add some padding around it too. Let's add eight pixels around it and let's add a fill. Let's add a white fill. Ooh, what happened here? It looks like this white fill is just like a getting lost in there. So we can do two things. We can change the background to be just like a little gray here, just like a light gray, or we can keep it white, but add a stroke. We can add a stroke to our frame and just a light gray stroke that just like a, lets you know that this is an input field. Okay, so now this is a white background. Let me add eight pixels also. I am adding eight pixels everywhere of corner radius. Now you're going to see that eight pixels here on top and bottom, that looks pretty good. But here on the right, Eh, this action is too close to the side. Let's see on the, on this side. My 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 brand is too close to the side too. So I can just change that. I select this, and I'm going to say on the side here. Let's try 16 pixels. 16 pixels looks pretty good. Let's try 16 pixels over here too. That looks pretty nice. So that's pretty much it. We created an app bar with multiple auto layouts. We added one auto layout for our branding over here. This is one auto layout. Then we added another auto layout for all these actions, including the branding. Then we created a search input field with another auto layout with an icon and a text field. And also we added actions on the right, multiple actions, but two of them are actually also other auto layouts that look like buttons. How cool is that? So that's it. This is part of a crash course on Figma's auto layout. There are more lessons to learn, so keep watching.